Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this very first webinar here from Hasle Rüegsau, live. My name is Bernhard Gerber. I'm going to be your host today, and I will guide you through our factory, showing you a few insights which are really representing the strategy of Blaser Swiss Loop. Now, being here, looking outside in this beautiful landscape, on a rainy day, you cannot see it, but in the far, far, far southeast, you would see the mountains. If you look down to the river, you can see it. I've been asking myself many times, how come that the Blaser family was able to found such a chemical company within this beautiful environment? But let's ask this question to the CEO of Blaser, third generation, Mark Blaser. Hey, Mark. Hi, Bernard. You got the nice weather today. <laughs> <hey>? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't change that one. Thanks hey, that's nature. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for taking, and that's life. Thanks for that's taking it. your time. Um, Mark, I was just telling the audience that this is such a beautiful place within nature. How come that the Blaser family has decided to set up a factory in this green environment? Well, there is one very simple answer. And, uh, you know, when my grandfather started uh, the company in 1936, he was actually living here in the town. So that's the very simple explanation. So we started here because he lived here. Uh, but I think the much more important question is, well, what does such an environment do to run a company? And, you know, I mean, if you look around, we're in a wonderful uh, environment and also in a groundwater area. So a respectful way of treating or dealing with the environment and the human being is in our DNA since 1936. And today you also see this, you know, in uh, innovative product, uh, products that we have. So 1973, we actually already started with bactericide-free, water-miscible, metal-working fluids. A whole product range which is called Blazacut. Far ahead of its time and definitely a unique concept how to utilize nature to maintain nature stable. Okay, but that sounds somehow expensive. Isn't it very expensive to be here in Switzerland and then you sell a product out into the world? How do you convince the customers? Well, it's very simple. Our promise is very clear. It's always to deliver a solution which creates the lowest cost for the customers. So whatever the starting point is, we take the price, the price level of uh, the product which is in use and we compare ourselves. At the end of the day, we do not help the customer if we just deliver cheaper products per gallon or per liter, but we have to deliver them a solution which in a tangible and measurable way deliver de delivers them lower cost for their manufacturing and hence higher profitability in their business. Whatever the starting point is, we measure ourselves against it and we only want to deliver or serve the customer if we truly and tangibly can deliver an added value to our customers. So that means you measure, how do you measure? How do you show the value to the customer at the very end? Well, we do a so-called liquid tool analysis. It always starts with a thorough situation analysis. So we need to know what the customer is doing and how he is doing it. Then based on our expertise, we make the second step, which is a value proposal, where we say, well, if you work with us, this, these are the results you can expect. But usually these results are tool wear, reduced tool wear, there are shorter cycle times, or there are higher outputs and uh, such things. Usually the customer says, okay, nice promise, now show us and run the proof. And that's the third step, we then run a trial on this uh, analyzed machine to document the results. And that's the fourth step. At the end of this liquid tool analysis, the customer receives a productivity report where he sees where did I start, what was promised to me, what results did we achieve, and what benefits did we achieve in dollars, in uh, Swiss francs, or whatever is the relevant currency for the customer. Thank you, Mark. I think you brought up the most important word to me, that's the liquid tool. Because this is actually the myth we're going to follow today. Um, we want to show you 
how this liquid tool story becomes true. What are we going to do today? First of all, we go downstairs to the building on your left. This is our laboratory. It's including service laboratory as well as R&D. Unfortunately, you guys will miss the building which is in front of you. That's our production facility, which is right now under constructions. Uh, since we are heavily growing, we have to enlarge our capacity. And then further to the right, you see the long building, which is logistics. We're also going to skip that. But then just at the very right hand side, that's where we're going to be at the very end of our liquid tool journey of today. That's going to be the tech center where we want to see those liquids in operation. I have to tell you, 30 years ago when I started as a mechanic, I never thought that the coolant can have such a big impact on your success with the machine and production cost. I was never looking in the back of the machine where the blood of the machine sits. I was actually spending my time in front of the machine. I wanted to make sure that the parts, they have the right quality. And I thought that is lowering my cost. But yeah, I was wrong. I have to admit I was wrong. So let's see why I think I was wrong and I missed a huge opportunity to save cost per part and operating cost. I'm on my way now. I hand over to Etienne Chancartier. He's downstairs in the laboratory. He will now take over. Meanwhile, I will run downstairs. See you later, guys. Welcome, everybody. This is live from Customer Service Laboratory. I would like to show you what we are doing here. What's our daily business? This is what we're doing for you every single day. You see many samples on this big table. Most of these samples are water miscible coolants for monitoring. We analyze these samples for our customers to guarantee the quality. On a monthly basis, customers are sending sample in this laboratory and we check the quality. Over there, you see neat oils. We do this exactly the same for this part of coolants. It's important to monitor the quality for technical reasons, of course, as well as to prevent from problem. This is extremely important for a process stability to have a no problem process running. We can check that before a problem happens. We will see that in this laboratory. You see the lab technicians here. These are all lab and coolant specialists. They check the coolants for you to, gar to guarantee the quality. Next to this big amount of monitoring samples, which makes about 10,000 samples a year globally. We are also analyzing this kind of samples. You see here transparent samples, water samples. This is the tap water from our customers. And this is important to know the chemical condition of this water quality. It's different from customer to customer. The water quality is different. We have to measure it. This is also what we're doing here in this laboratory to recommend the right product. All of this we're doing with, within our four step liquid tool process. That's a part of our collaboration. Customer Blaser Swiss Loop. We call it as a service in the drum. Hey Etienne. Hi Bernard. Hey, how are you? You made just it. Just made it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. A little Thank bit you. wet, but all fine. Etienne, this is a nice lab. Yes, it is. It is, and it's not the only one. You will see the microbiological lab. We have an R and D lab, which you will also see, and very important, there is a lab in Goshen, state of New York, in the USA, which runs exactly the same process. So that means we do not send all the samples to Switzerland, so we go close to the customer. That's right. So we are very close to the customer. So US customer sending in generally the samples to Goshen, state of New York, and for special reasons, special cases, they send it to Switzerland, further down to Switzerland. But it's very important. We have also laboratories in China and in India. Speed is important. We have to be very close to these customers. Etienne, but here uh, 
there's also something important. Hey, it's smelling. What, oh, yeah. what happened to that sample? Sometimes it happens. This is what you see here. This little amount of, of samples. A problem can occur by the customer. You felt that the smell is not okay. I, I fully agree. This is not acceptable. As well as the color. The appearance doesn't look as it should. So we will analyze them. This sample will be analyzed through the specialists over there and we will find out the root cause. So, so you, you, you just said that, that you're analyzing. Um, what do the, the customer get out of the analysis? Every single report or every single sample get a report and that looks like that one here. <coughs> so here, customer data, you see the comment. It's very important to, to interpret the data, the measured data of the lab technicians and to define a crystal clear plan of action. We measure chemical values as well as physical values and last but not least, very important, microbiological values as well. That gives us an overall condition of this coolant sample and we will find out the root cause for Microbiology, it. that's a good word for me because I'm sure if I take this sample to the guys over in the microbiology lab, they have something to tell me. Absolutely. I'm sure they Absolutely. will give me some more insight. They will but find Etienne, out more details, yeah. No. I know you're going also to do a deep dive for our audience. May 13th, very important. Please meet same time, May 13th. That's the deep dive webinar, yeah, that's correct. As I told you up before, I never took care of the blood of the machine. All the mechanics out in the world, make sure you follow that seminar because it will help to make also the operators more happy. Okay. Now let's go to the micro so see lab. You, see you on May 13th. Bye, Bye, -bye. Again. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, microbiology for me, um, it's certainly not my core competence. Um, I actually look at it uh, like a pond where you have animals and plants inside and as long as they live in harmony together, you don't have to change anything with the pond. We have central systems in the world, they've been running for more than 20 years without any interaction from us. Sounds great, but I still have this sample here, this pond might not be that happy. Let's see what, what our guys are doing in the microbiology. Hi, Belinda. Hi. hi, Peter. Hi, Bernard. What are you guys doing? We are currently looking at the customer sample to analyze if it contains a microbiological organism. And um, as you can see here, um, you should now see a video um, with the bacteria are circled in blue. It would be like here. And uh, fungi, hi fungi hyphae are circled in red. So this, this blue line is the fungi. Is this common that you have fungi in a sample? Um, the, uh, the red one on are the fungi, and in the video it's circled in the red one. But um, it's the, the long one is the fungi. Yeah, it's a exactly. High fee. Yeah. No, but it's not common at all, actually. Fungi are just occasional guests in the work fluid. Quite on the contrast, bacteria you find extremely often there because bacteria are ubiquitous in nature and the environment, so they will also find their way into the metalwork fluid easily. And actually the trick is not to work against them and to try to keep them out completely, but to work with them, to control them, and maybe even take advantage of the properties. That is actually something we have been doing with the um, Blaser Bio concept for decades now. Yeah. Very good. Now, I have here a sample which might not be in a such a good condition. Can I now put it under the microscope to, to get a result? Can I see it? The microorganisms in the system um, like this? Directly from the sample? No, unfortunately not. Um, because of the oily part, you would only see droplets. But actually, I have a picture which shows this exact situation. So, it would look like this. So, all these little dots, that is uh, the oily part, and you wouldn't see anything, at anything micro any microorganism at all. And so the, weird thing, yeah. the weird thing is that lots of these droplets have the same size as bacteria. So, you, you cannot distinguish anything. It would just see droplets and nothing else. You just see how they mixed up the, the yeah, coolant right. actually with the channels. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So that means first I have to isolate the microorganism, remove the oily part, and then I can analyze them under the microscope. 
or we could also cultivate them by uh, heterotrophic plate count. But it depends, uh, is it a bioconcept or a non-bioconcept sample? Bioconcept, why does that matter for this process? Um, for us, it matters uh, a lot. I can show you some example if you have a minute. Yes, please. I think that would be very interesting for the audience to see the difference. Yeah, and th the main thing for us is from a bioconcept, we have a certain expectation. We expect bacteria, mainly from a certain species, so we do the proper controls to analyze that. If you have another sample or another query, we use different tests. So that's, that's the main thing. That sounds nice. That looks nice. Yes, that's actually nice because that's our primary bacteria. So all the colonies that you see is uh, all the same size, the same shape. That is our primary bacteria. And um, so we know that is a perfect stable bioconcept. So and how, would, how does this one look like? Well, I don't know it uh, <laughs> like this, but I think with um, this tramp oil in it, maybe a bit more like this. So we would also detect if other bacteria would settle in the metal working fluid. And these kind of bacteria look very different from our primary bacteria. And they also can produce an unpleasant smell. Okay. And when they are molds in the metal working fluid, we would detect it with a other kind of agar plate with an other nutrition. Oi. And that would like that. That looks ugly. Why is it why is it closed, closed up? Is it sealed? Yeah, because um, uh, fungi can produce spores and they go easily in the air and some people can be a bit sensitive. So that would also be bad for your health and for the operators. Yes. Yeah, for I some at least. better avoid that, at least right? For some, yeah. A bit like the pollen, when you're okay. allergic to pollen. That's very interesting. So I think it's really worth spending more time on that as well, guys. I also I so know too, yeah. that you are going to hold a, a webinar. Yeah, on the 28th of May about the bacteria and the, all the influence of maintaining your sump in a better way. So I'm looking forward yeah. to see that. Me too. We look forward yeah. to it too, yeah. Thanks for the visit. Thank You're you welcome. very Welcome. Thank you so much for explaining. Have a nice day. Now, we've seen the service department. We see the microbiology. Let's now go to the R&D. Um, as you see, it's one more lab. They're all mirrored in a way that we have same procedures, same data, from each laboratory to the other. This ensures also consistent quality of the data. Now, why are we now developing a titanium performer? We see and we follow very close to the markets, the segments, and we see, of course, as you also might know, that the medical industry as well as the aircraft industry, they have very demanding processes. And for that, our chemistry, our chemist uh, Olivia, is right now developing and still working on that power product. Olivia, hey, Hello, how are you? Hi. Nice to see you. I was just explaining the, the guys that um, you've been working on this titanium performer, and I really would like to understand a little bit more, how do you develop systematically such a kind of product? Well, first of all, in order to develop such um, a specific product, you really have to get to know every ingredient you want to add. Every single product contains 15 to 20 different raw materials. And like in medication, every ingredient will have an effect, but possibly also side effects. So to balance all these possible interactions, you need a lot of experience. And if you want to hear more on how additives interact in an emulsified system, tune in on my webinar that will take place in June. That sounds good. Olivia, and since I have again to run through the rain <laughs> to the next place, why don't you explain a little bit more about not all the secrets from Blase, but just give them some insight about how you work on Titanium Performer. And I, I keep running away to the next location. Thank you very that. much Thank for your you. help. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Olivia. Thank Bye. you. So hello from my side. For the next few minutes, I will tell you the length we went to in order to be able to formulate a high-performing titanium product. To outplay standard titanium products, we had to learn how we can control the chemical and physical impact of a coolant on the workpiece and on the tool wear. To obtain the expertise we have today, Chemists, mechanics, 
and technicians work together closely. We combine different disciplines such as chemistry, physics, tribology, material science, toxicology and microbiology. We apply the strategy in order to, to omit known sensitizers so that we can obtain a formulation that is soft on humans but still harsh on titanium. We did several tribological studies in order to get to know the impact of chemistry on the chip formation. This is what we call our chem to chip expertise. Chem to chip stands for chemistry to chip and it means that we really want to understand the influence of chemistry on the chip formation. During our development process, we even managed to take a look at the cutting zone of a tool while machining titanium. Let me share this short video sequence with you when you can see the exact moment the tool cuts into the titanium workpiece. So what you see here is the tool, the titanium workpiece, and if you take a close look, you can see the chip being formed here. The picture is a little blurred due to the emulsion in the system, but you can also see that there is a bit of vaporized emulsion in front of the tool. We always imagined that this would happen because of course it is well known that there is a large amount of heat being generated in the cutting zone. But to actually be able to see just what happens where the coolant, the tool and the, 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 the workpiece meet was a breakthrough. While keeping all the soft factors such as, for example, foam control, corrosion protection, machine compatibility in mind, we worked hard on finding out what different additives, what the influence of different additives on the tool were. There was a separate project just focusing on the wetting properties of coolants. For example, What you can see here is a drop of coolant spreading over a workpiece. Due to this project, we realized how we can influence the wetting property of a coolant with different additives. In the end, we put together a huge puzzle in order to solve the mystery of machining titanium. We managed to formulate a titanium performer that outplays any standard titanium product. I imagine that by now Bernard has arrived in the technology center and I will pass on back to him in a second. But if you want to hear more on our latest titanium product, tune in on my webinar in June. I will be happy to see you then. Until then, goodbye and keep safe. Hello, welcome back. It's 5.24 p.m. in Switzerland. We're still live. The internet seems to work fine, which is not all the time the case since there's heavy traffic. Um, I know that Olivia just showed you the movie where you see the removal of the chip and you see the outgassing of the chemistry. This is actually my favorite because this was for us a huge breakthrough into the common understanding of how to remove a chip with chemistry. We are now here at the tech center number one which we've established 12 years ago with a clear goal. We wanted to really understand whether the promise we make and the developments we are doing also perform according to our plan. Let's meet Adrian. Adrian, he's our head of manufacturing technology. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Can you please explain to the audience a little bit what you're doing here in daily business? Of course. Currently, we are nine employees here in the technology center. They are mechanics, they are engineers, they work closely together. Uh, we have here in this room three CNC milling machines. In another room, we have a, a grinding machine and an MQL machine. And our... Uh, what are the main tasks? What our main tasks, yeah. business here? Our main tasks are, uh, first, we perform uh, custom trainings here in-house. That important. means... Any customer or business partner 
can ask for a visit and we do training for them? That's right, absolutely right. That's great. Yes. Then second, we uh, support our R&D department with uh, performance testing. Here you see an example of a flankware. That's an important thing for us. I think this is something you're going to show later on again, huh? That's right, yes. Okay. And uh, last but not least, uh, we perform uh, custom projects. Here you see an example of a deep hole drilling process. We reduce the cycle time per hole at this process from 3 minutes to 10 seconds. That, that's huge. That's well, huge. that's a promise. Yes. Um, Mark told me at the very beginning of the, how this liquid tool, so this is then the liquid tool effect. That's Do you have another example which you can show to the audience? Yes, of course. Come on, please follow me. Marco, show the seat. By the way, this was just Swiss German. As you know, English is not our native language. So some of the guys might struggle a little bit when we talk to them, but you will see they can handle that fine. Hey, Marco. Hello, Oi. Bernhard. So Adrian, he just told me uh, about this deep hole drilling project, yes. but I would like to get a little bit more. Can okay. you give uh, us an example yes. how the coolant can have an influence on the process? Yes, uh, this is a very good example for this. This is a project for, uh, for an aircraft supplier, which is manufacturing landing gears. And the whole problem there was the pocket milling process where the tool life was very short and very low and the tooling costs very high. So we started with analyzing the whole process next to the pocket milling process and analyzed the whole thing and then we adapted the testing setup for our machines because the sizes uh, were different to our machines. And this was the or original piece we used for the tests. And then first we simulate the current situation of the customer with his coolant and this was five pockets. After the five pockets we have to change in tools because the wear was achieved okay. and the tool was not longer usable. And then we test different products from us and the best one you can see here, we can machine 11 pockets. That's hold on, hold on. You're telling me yeah. just by changing the coolant yeah. without changing the parameters of the cutting process? Yeah. You more than doubled the lifetime? Yes, exactly. It's oh, really just exactly. switching the coolant, all the other parameters in the okay, test Okay, but was exactly the same. Marco, yes. now how do you translate that into a customer success? Yeah. It's, I mean, this is lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Cool wear. Yeah. Yeah, well, one thing is uh, you can save tooling costs because you need uh, less tools, but it's the most times it have the bigger effect if you sacrifice the tool life or increase the speed and oh, the feet. that's smart. Yes, and so you have uh, not 120% more tool life, but also more tool life, but you can also reduce the cycle time, and this is also a very high position. Now, I'm your customer. Yes. I'm the purchasing guy. Yes. Your coolant is too expensive. Yes. How do you show me my cost savings yes. then? Yeah, for this, we have a tool how we can simulate and show the customer what has happened on the cost side. With this data we have, we can calculate the coolant investment. In this case, it was less than 3,000 euros. But with the increased tool life of 6%, we can save more than 80,000 euros in tooling costs. And also, by reducing cycle time on 10%, we also can save more than 60,000 euros and so you have the much bigger okay. effect. Let me quick explain that to the audience. Again, you're saying yeah. by investing an additional 2,800 euro, yeah. you then got a reduction in tool life, yes. rewarding with 18,000 mm -hmm. euro. And same time, just by reducing the cycle time and this sacrificing uh, of tool life, yeah. You added another 64,000 in savings. Yes. So this is 80,000 francs just by changing the coolant. This is really striking. It's, it's very impressive because this is a very good example to show the leverage effect. Yeah. Of the now, coolant. could you explain a little bit more about the tool? Yes, but I think it's better when we do it uh, other time in our next webinar from the tech center. 
again a webinar. Hey? There are many of them in the future. On the 10th of June, you can discover the liquid tool effect together with our team from the process engineering. And you know, guys, we are live. Now, having so heavy traffic, I just got informed that the live Q&A session might not work. And therefore, uh, I prepared one myself. They told me to give me self, uh, ask myself a, a question, which I'm going to do right now. What is my question? How can Blaster support the industry during the COVID-19 time? And there are actually three ways how we can support. As you have heard before, visit our seminars and webinars. They're all online. You can sign up. You can download information, get trained your people, save cost. Second, and this is very important. Now, if you have a shutdown in your factory and your coolant is not moving, it's not good for your blood. You have to move your blood. So please ask your service department. Let us help you to make sure that your coolant is not dying. Send in a sample. It's for free. You can hand in samples for free. We will help you to make sure that your coolant is performing after the corona crisis as it did before. And last not but least, you have to be more competitive in the future. Investing might not be such a big opportunity. So what can you do? You can reduce your cost. Reducing cost either in saving tool costs, as we just say, seen here, or as a second opportunity, you get a more efficient process, production process, and you can reduce your cost per part. Again, talk to our salespeople. They're more than happy to support you. So this was my own question. I hope it helped you a little bit. And now, looking forward, I can already see the finish line, Adrian. But um, there are two more tables here. What is this That's for? right. Here are some grinding examples and the uh, MQL, but uh, we will uh, show you and tell you more at, at one of our webinars. So uh, you have to be a little bit. Uh... So all the, the grinding machine and grinding processes, as well as minimum quantity lubrification, you will show us during the webinar. That's right. That's going to be in the, the other room as well. Right. That's Great. We're I take forward. this one. Thanks. So thank you so much, Adrian. And now we're almost there. You remember Olivia claiming to, you know, come up with this very high-performing product. This is Tobias and Valentin. Those are two uh, engineers who are testing now. Uh, Tobias, can you tell us a little bit more how we test at Blas a future product? Sure. Um, you speak before about Olivia's product. Um, here on this machine, you can see it. And we use this machine to test our products. We, we test the water measurable products. Voila, Maybe it's easier when we look in the machine. We have this machine equipped with some cameras, microscope, tool measurement, and stuff like this. So this is all working automatically? Yes. With the microscope in the machine, we can measure the insert during a process. That means we can testing automatically. What we also look at is um, the soft factor of a coolant. That means, when you see here, we look how does it feels, how does it looks in the machine, and how is the cleanness, for example, on the machine window. So if you don't like it, what do you do? It don't go to market. So you can actually stop a product because, as an operator, you don't like it? Yes. In, for this reason, our um, opinion is, is really important. That sounds good. Let, let me show you some other thing. We have here a force measurement device that we use to, to measure the performance for, for our coolants. OK, let me, let me take apart. I want to see that in real life. So you're telling me this, this is actually in the machine while you're milling, right? Yes. We can measure the forces in a cutting process in real time. You see it here, live on the screen. So that's the green one now, huh? Eh? Yes. Depending how much force I apply to the tool holder, 
It will measure and it will bring those data to, to the data center. Exactly. We can measure um, the forces in every direction. So this would then be the vertical force here, right? Yes. Wow. Okay. So That's when, we, when we test the product, we can actually see what is the chemistry doing on the cutting edge. Okay, so that's actually again this translation from the chemistry to the chip. Exactly. Where the operators work together with the chemists. Yeah, chem to chip. That's true, I mean, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. But talking about those data, what are you doing with them? Um, we here have the same database with the laboratory and the chemist. So that means when we start to develop a new product, we really can work as a team. So they produce a new formulation, they bring it up to here, we test it, we look together on the data and make some statistic, and that helps us really to um, create a strong product. Sounds like a good plan. Now, now, there's still one information missing. How much above the benchmark is the titanium perform performing then? Okay. Is it better than the benchmark? Yes. With this product, we can reach up to 50% more tool life. Wow. And again, that's a word. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you, Valentin. Thank you, too. Now, I know it um, seems like now selling things. That might be part of it. But how can you see that this liquid tool story is really true? And how can you see the effect of using the right coolant in your production and leverage the miracle of chemistry to chip. Let me show you a very simple example, which was actually striking to me. We have here uh, taps. It's actually formed taps. And you can see two different qualities. They were both with the same tap, but you see the upper one has a very bad surface. So where does it come from? It's a matter of the coolant. So what did we do then? We started testing on one hand other coolants, the not performing well coolants with a very high torque. And then we started analyzing what would be the best coolant to support this tap forming process. And we actually ended up having a coolant, and you can see that here, this was the coolant as we started with, with 16 newton meters. And if you, you can do that at home, with, you just name a torque wind. And then you take the new coolant, the liquid tool. I mean, this is, it's half the force. What does that mean for your process? First of all, again, less tool wear. Second, the risk of a breaking tool much more lower. So those are the factors. And this is how we think the liquid tool is really going to support your production in the future. And this is also the end of today's webinar, the first webinar. Thank you so much for watching. We're looking forward to see you now in the technical webinars. Don't forget to sign up, www.blaser slash webinars. It's free. We're looking forward to see you there. Have a good day and all good health to you. Bye.